good answers to hard questions. Um, now, the interesting about uh, the Twitter, uh, not nearly as many hands as Facebook. How many people have tried Twitter and sort of never went back? Or, uh, yeah, that's a few more. <laughs> that's interesting. Anyway, we'll get into it because there's quite a bit here. Uh, basically, just going to have a quick look at um, media audiences, both traditional and new, and where they're, where they're at at the moment, um, how they're relating to each other. I suppose that's the intermediation part, uh, uh, traditional media and, and the new media, and then some of the, uh, the opportunities and the pitfalls uh, that certainly we can see uh, in some of the new media, particularly social media at the moment. Um, there's a few charts. Sorry, it's early in the morning, I know, but um, <laughs> we'll get through them pretty quickly. Uh, this is 2004, and this is the whole year. Basically, this is just to... Um, give you an idea of uh, what sort of news was covered and how it was covered by each of the different kind of, uh, of media, the four there. And it's pretty similar all the way through. Certainly uh, in the press there was more coverage of the election, uh, 2004 an election year of course. Uh, but other than that, not a great deal of difference in, uh, in how much uh, uh, each of those issues was covered. Uh, it's all pretty consistent. And then if we look at 2009, this is actually a week just a, uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, but this is consistent of, of what uh, the media is like at the moment. You'll see it's completely different. Uh, these days, they're all uh, seeking their own audiences. You look at the press line, the red line, and, uh, and TV, the sort of greyish uh, one, and they're virtually a mirror image. Uh, issues that are important to press, uh, are not to television. Uh, that tends to be more complex uh, things like like climate change, certainly water. Uh, water issues tends to get almost no coverage on television uh, nationally. Um, whereas uh, all the usual things like uh, sport, uh, Usain Bolt, uh, still international news, you know, and, and, and things that things that have uh, big scary pictures with them, uh, get plenty of coverage on television. I suppose the point is that there has been um, a move even in mainstream media to become sort of a niche, uh, to have a specific audience and specifically relate themselves not to news but to their particular type of news, TV news or, or, uh, or internet news or, or press news. Uh, radio tends to still sort of cover everything. Uh, just a few quick numbers. You're probably all fairly aware of all of these. More than 200 million blogs worldwide. Uh, 132 million members. Facebook, that was the end of 2008, so it's probably considerably more than that now. Uh, MySpace <coughs> might be a bit less than that, who knows. Um, uh, there you go, claimed 150 million active members in February. Uh, 580 million members of social network sites. Whether that means 580 million people or 500, 580 million uh, uh, logins or memberships is, uh, is a different question, but it's still obviously an awful lot of people. Uh, YouTube, 100 million online video viewers per month, uh, 6 million videos per month uh, viewed, and, and that probably uh, certainly won't have gone down. Of course, now they're finally uh, trying to get a bit of money out of that. I've seen the uh, ads that now appear on, uh, on YouTube videos. Okay, and this is perhaps the less uh, obvious part of where audiences are at the moment. This is the main uh, uh, print publications in Australia and their audiences over the last five years. It's a fairly boring chart. Uh, there hasn't been any huge collapse in press audiences. Uh, in fact, in some markets uh, where, where one might have dipped a little bit, like, say, the Herald Sun, uh, the other one, The Age, has, uh, has come up a bit. So there's still virtually exactly the same amount of people buying, going and buying, you know, old, old dead trees, as they call them, papers now as there was five years ago. Uh, it's, of course, the reason why... <laughs> 
there's been an awful lot of media about the media and, and all the problems it in. It isn't really the audience. Uh, it's the same with radio and television. The audiences haven't, haven't gone south at any kind of rapid rate of knots, haven't really gone down at all. It's uh, the advertising end of it. Uh, so, I mean, from those figures, the new media and, and traditional, obviously there is a lot more media being consumed or, or, or people are taking an active role in. Uh, but at that same time, advertising budgets have stayed the same or, as probably a lot of you would know, um, have been reduced. So all of that ends up with... Uh, and you've got, obviously, the news websites that uh, have changed how media works a lot as well. You don't have, uh, you don't have one press publication a day. You have, you have a front page of a website which is updated... Uh, you know, they used to be updated maybe a couple of times a day. Of course, these, these days it's pretty much hourly or whenever news comes in, you'll see two or three different main features. Uh, they'll have those rotating as well. So it really is almost become a bit like radio news where you're constantly updating the news throughout the day uh, and always trying to find new stories. So uh, not only is there all this new media, but traditional media are looking for far more external content than ever. Uh, social media, of course, provides a huge pool of, uh, of free content, basically, for them. And so, while uh, the social media fashions come and go, it may be a different website, it may be whatever's uh, cool for that six-month period, those professional media properties will still need to be getting all that content from somewhere. And this is, uh, is basically uh, how much coverage those social media properties have been getting in, uh, in traditional media. This is sort of looking over the past 12 months or so. Uh, you can see there's a lot of trend about it. Uh, MySpace uh, down the bottom there uh, sort of trailing off. Uh, Facebook certainly uh, has got an awful lot of coverage in the last nine months or so. Uh, YouTube... Uh, starting a lot higher than all the rest and, and still uh, obviously pretty prominent across the media. Uh, and Twitter, uh, there it is from basically nothing uh, six months ago to now being mentioned more often uh, across the media than, than any of the others. So they have, as you've seen, received a huge amount of, uh, of free publicity. And the reason... Uh, well, some of the reasons why uh, there is so much coverage of these new media, this, this uh, social media in particular, uh, in traditional media is uh, obviously journalists, apart from liking all of that free content and having all of these different areas to, to fill up uh, the website page and all of the other pages that they have to fill up to, to keep those audiences that they have, in fact, kept, uh, they like to fill it up with the latest technologies and understand their industry and where it's going. Uh, it, also, it also works for both sides. I mean, mentioning the latest new media trend, uh, it makes you seem like you're smart and you know what's going on. It also provides a lot of greater authority and free publicity to, to that property, uh, that online property that's being mentioned. And, of course... There's, there's us, the audience, the people who are reading the paper or whatever it may be. Uh, most of us uh, aren't spending all our time trawling through the net trying to find what the latest, um, latest social media fashion is or what's going to be the next big thing. So there is, of course, the, uh, the informational part of that. Uh, so obviously if we hear it from one of our traditional media sources, we then might go and try it and, and see if it works for us. And that's why you've seen, particularly with Twitter, a very large churn uh, in the first year and with quite a few of them, people who hear about it from somewhere and go and try it and don't really, it doesn't work for them or don't see that 